Scarlett Johansson and Disney agreed to end the lawsuit. Wow, who would have thunk it? Did you think this day would come? I had no idea. We finally made it. This is from CNN Business. Scarlett Johansson versus Disney is over. On Thursday, the actress and Disney resolved their dispute over the lawsuit that Johansson filed against the company in July. The lawsuit alleged... Disney breached her contract by releasing Black Widow, a Marvel film starring the actress on Disney Plus on the same day it was released in theaters. Before we jump any deeper into this, how did you feel about what happened? Did you feel like she was in the right for this lawsuit situation thing? Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, yes, it would create a precedent that other people might come forward. She wasn't the only one affected by this. Like Emma Stone, Cruella came out at the same time on Disney Plus as well as theaters. And I mean, this is a brave new world, right? With all of this COVID stuff and everyone's just trying out new things to survive. Yeah. But she was agreed a certain amount. She expected a certain amount and was expecting a certain amount of back end. Therefore, her fee probably didn't necessarily reflect what she would normally charge for a similar type of movie. Right. I think the best move would have been for when Disney was deciding to, you know, restructure their situation, they should have talked to her. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I think I mean, who knows? Maybe they did talk to her and they just had a disagreement and she's like, "Well, I'll see you in court." It could have been like that. You know, who knows what happened behind the closed doors? But uh, it seems like she was not included in the conversation and they didn't Gal Gadot her the way HBO did. They should have Gal Gadot yeah, they, her. Yeah, they should have. Johansson said in a statement on Thursday that she was happy to have resolved our differences. Yay. I'm incredibly proud of the work we've done together over the years and have greatly enjoyed my creative relationship with the team. She said, I look forward to continuing our collaboration for in years to come. What does that mean? Ideally, this means that we'll get more ScarJo at some point, Ideally. somehow, some shape, some form, whether it's a flashback or whether they bring her back from the dead. Ideally, it means means that they can collaborate again. But, you know, these are things you got to say, you know, for it's good PR. Do you think that they really forgave her and that they're going to bring her back? If there's money on the table, yes. So do you think it's possible that they were like, listen, we understand that we screwed you. However, here are a bunch of other movies that you could be in and we'll pay you and, and it's going to be fine and blah, blah, blah. And so she's kind of going, okay, well, there's this one thing that I'm fighting for here. This dishwasher but, is really loud. <laughs> sorry, you guys. Apologize. But there is the possibility of more stuff, which means more money in the future. And yeah. so I'll take one for the team this time around. Uh, I think they paid her off. So I think yeah, most it, likely. It, 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 terms of the agreement were not disclosed. Alan Bergman, chairman of Disney Studios Content, said that Disney appreciates Johansson's control contributions to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and look forward to working together on a number of upcoming projects, including Disney's Tower of Terror. Wait, is that a movie or is that a ride? That's a movie. That's okay. a movie based on the ride is what I'm assuming here. Yeah, I mean, it's in Disney's best interest to work this out, especially with the other lawsuits still pending for Marvel. It's less like, you know, <laughs> we gotta put out these fires. I'm sure Disney and a lot of big companies are dealing with lawsuits all the time. As I talked about before, I forget where, when Peter Jackson was doing, I think, Lord of the Rings, he was actually suing New Line Cinema while in post-production for New Line Cinema. Like, he would go from the post-production office and work on the movie and then go across the, the lot to go to the law office on the lot and then, like, deal with them over there. Lawsuits are just sort of part par for the course. Like, Apple and Samsung dealt with that a lot, where I think Apple, Apple was using Samsung's displays while suing them. The suit alleged that putting Black Widow on Disney Plus reduced Johansson's financial stake in the film because she had agreed that her salary would be based in large part on the film's box office hall. And so I just think that whatever was in Disney Plus's um, subscription model, like the additional fee that they were charging audiences uh, or people to watch it, I think that that should have just been built into the the box office. Like that is now part yeah. of the box office. That, I don't it's know. That simple. I don't know if that is or if that isn't. I don't think it was. I think that's considered new media, and so I don't know. I'm I'm not. I don't know the fine print on all that. Disney responded in July by saying there is no merit whatsoever to this filing. The studio added at that time that the company fully complied with Mrs. Johansson's Mr. Hansen's contract, and furthermore, the release of Black Widow on Disney Plus with Premier Access has significantly enhanced her ability to earn additional compensation on top of the twenty million she has received to date. Well, that seems to imply that maybe they were paying her from uh, the premiere access. Maybe she didn't know she was getting compensated from Disney+. Plus. The release of Blackwood on Disney+, Plus with premiere access, has, has significantly enhanced her ability to earn additional compensation. I don't know if she was aware of that. But that's also ambiguous. It significantly enhanced her ability. But how so? Was she being paid for it? Or is it... I, I don't understand. So we got a Hollywood Reporter article here. We're going to go over real quick. Terms of the deal were not disclosed. That... 
That should be disclosed. I am happy Why to should have it resolved, be? Because we want to know. Did she get her $50 million? Uh, <laughs> I'm happy to have resolved our differences with Disney State Johansson. I'm incredibly proud of that. Okay, we saw that. The explosive suit filed by the actress in July in Los Angeles Superior Court claimed that the studio sacrificed the film's box office potential in order to grow its fledging fledgling Disney Plus streaming service. Disney countered that Johansson was paid $20 million for the film. <laughs> They're like... But we paid her twenty million. Well, she she should get, just be grateful well, for she, that. She was supposed to get fifty million, um, based on box office projections or something. At the time of the complaint, a Disney spokesperson said, "In part, the lawsuit is especially sad and distressing in its callous disregard for the horrific and prolonged global effects of the COVID nineteen pandemic." Whoa! They went there. Wow. Okay. Look, I at, mean, look at that over there. Yeah. Look yeah. at that over there. No, Isn't I mean, that awful? I, yes. <laughs> Yes. Why are you doing this to me right now? Look at them. They're suffering. That That is that is not wrong, but also, wow, okay. <laughs> it, it does you, feel like a whataboutism, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, CAA co-chairman Brian Lord shot back that Disney shamelessly fal and falsely accused Ms. Johansson of being insensitive to the global COVID pandemic in an attempt to make her appear to be someone they... And I know she isn't. Why would Disney forego hundreds of millions of dollars in box office receipts by releasing the picture in theaters at a time when it knew that the theatrical market was weak, rather than waiting a few months for the market to recover, the complaint asked. On information and belief, the decision to do so was made at least in part because Disney saw the opportunity to promote its flagship subscription service using the picture and Mr. Hansen, thereby attracting new paying monthly subscribers, retaining existing ones, and establishing Disney Plus as a must-have service in an increasingly competitive marketplace. After all, Johansson had been considering a litigation for several months, says a source familiar with the suit. Until the afternoon of July 28th, she believed Disney would make an offer and that she wouldn't have to file a suit. But Disney stayed in the mode of, let's keep talking, the source adds. Johansson was particularly incensed by the announcement, which pleased Wall Street, but not the talent rep and representation community. Whoa, okay, <laughs> so that's what it was. So yeah, like they they kept, they kept, oh, well, we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out, put it out, we'll figure it out. According to the complaint, Disney's move not only increased the value of Disney+, Plus, but it also intentionally saved Marvel and therefore, thereby itself, what Marvel itself referred to as very large box office bonuses that Marvel otherwise would have been obligated to pay Miss Johansson. In the wake of Johansson's suit, more than a handful of other A-listers were said to be considering filing similar suits. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson's just in the corner, like contemplating. Well, it says that Jungle Crew star Dwayne Johnson was not one of them, given that he has a different compensation structure than Johansson. Like maybe he's a producer. Because Dwayne something. Johnson is a fucking beast. Yes. In terms of producing, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. So he must have worked that shit out. But that has not come to fruition yet. Corella's Emma Stone closed a deal two weeks after Johansson's suit to the star to a, to star in a sequel of Disney's live action film, offering a sign that Disney was working to secure and mollify talent amid the charged atmosphere. Yeah. Smart. That's smart. Warner Media took a different approach by proactively doling out as much as $200 million to pay a long list of stars whose Warner Brothers films were simultaneously opening in theaters and on its HBO Max streaming service, including Patty Jenkins, Gal Gadot, and Will Smith. That's the way to go about it. And it's not its not like Disney doesn't have the money. I feel like Warner Brothers is kind of putting up the money and taking a chance, right? And going, you know, we wanted to keep our relationships good, with the talent, uh, with the people who we worked with, and we wanna keep them on board, so let's try this out. We have the money in the bank, let's just give them money, whereas Disney's like, yeah, yeah. let's see if we can finagle something else. Yeah. It's important because it's an artist pushing back against a big company going, hey, you promised me this much, and you breached contract, so no, I'm not gonna sit here and lay down and take it. So I pay me, <laughs> pay me what I'm worth. I probably would have. I'm not gonna lie. I probably would have just taken it up that butt and been like, "All right, just please use lube," and moved on with my day. Like I, it, I mean, that's good on her for for Mad fighting respect. for her worth, you know? Yeah. Because very easily that could backfire and go the other direction. I'm glad it all got settled, but more for selfish reasons than anything else. Like I don't really care about Scarlett Johansson's money, if I'm being perfectly honest. Or Disney's, for that matter. Like, it doesn't really make a difference to me. You know, got a lot. being a normal, you know, Joe Schmo over here, just watching my watching my Netflix and my Disney Plus. Like, I, this doesn't really mean anything to me. What matters to me is that Scar in re Scar Joe's relationship to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the potential to have her back in more movies. That's all I care about. I was like, okay, cool. You know, sure. That's all I really care about. If I'm being honest, at the end of the day, I don't because I feel like if Scarlett Johansson didn't get this lawsuit settled, whatever the undisclosed amount is. She'd be all right. 
<laughs> she's gonna be cool still. She's still gonna be able to drive her fucking Tesla up in the Palisades or whatever wherever she lives. You know, she'll be cool. She'll be cool. She'll be all right. You know, I want another yacht. It's you rich know? people money, you know, and and probably her agents want her to make more money too, because then they stand to make more money. Sure. They want their ten percent or whatever the hell. They want their yacht. They want their yeah, second yacht. They want like, their third Tesla. I have I to pay it. my ex-wife. Yeah. No. I and so I get it. If I'm in her position and I have the, uh, and I feel like I've got that leverage, sure, I, I'm gonna go for it. I think that what she did was brave because easily she could she could have been like cast out of Hollywood. You know, you don't know, you don't know how those things are gonna go down. You know, yeah. maybe other studios become afraid to touch her. So I mean, it's also a, another thing as well. Like we've often talked about how often in the workplace, women aren't really the ones to step forward and go, hi, I'd like a raise, please, because I think I deserve this money or whatever. I feel like I've only heard about women stepping forward lately. Lately right. in Hollywood. Maybe, maybe in Hollywood, but I feel like from what I've read about, you know, in the traditional workplace, a lot of the time women well, yeah. are just like, okay, cool, it's fine, I'm happy to have a job. Right. And so I, I think it's great that she's she's making a stand and going, nope, yeah. I'm worth more. Right, so, but, in summation, cool. Yeah. Uh, it's all, all, I, all I really care about is the possibility that maybe they'll bring her back somehow. Maybe, they'll find a way. I mean, if there, there there have been talks about bringing back Chris Evans, about bringing back Robert Downey Jr. About, and so I'm sure eventually yeah. after this all, you know, after this smoke, the dust settles. Multiverse, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's, there's no reason not to consider it. There's money on the table. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Let us know uh, what you think in the comments below. I'm Jabby Koi. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.